Okay, so I think uh, we have already created a project. So the project is now there. Let's go for the admin panel right here. The project has been created. Let's open this project and start working on this. We already have a plan, you know. So we already have created the uh, user, you know, user flow. This is something like a plan that we are going to develop. Thank you. So this is the plan that we are having. So let's start uh, adding all those screens step by step, okay? This is generally what I follow. Instead of you know working on one screen and going with the another, it's better we can just create all the screen in the beginning. Empty screen to start with, add the navigation, and then we'll start filling up the details. Would you, I mean, do you agree with me? Yes. That's a better plan, okay? So we are, we know, that's the reason why we created the whole design before, you know? So we know what, uh, which are the screens that we have to add. So let's add all those empty components first, empty screens first, and then we'll start working on them one after another. So going back here in this application, in this particular screen, uh, sorry, in this particular directory, I'm going to create a new directory as usual, something called as screens. We know, we talked about that last time. I'm sorry, it's like screens. Inside this, we'll create all those seven, eight, whatever, number of components or number of screens that we need to work on. Uh, number four, one is going to be like something like a login.jsx. Now, I'm going to create this function called as login, and then we can start with uh, something like return. We know we are going to say like Dave. We'll call this as uh, h2. We'll put that class name as page header. It's not there. We'll define it in a minute. And we'll say this is login. Okay. This is going to be like export as usual, a default login. That's it. This is the component that is going to give me a login functionality. Let's copy this and paste it and say this is going to be register. Simple as that. In the registration screen, all we have to say here is replace this login with a register to start with, you know, a register to start with. We'll modify that screen later. We have the registration screen now. Next one is the home component. This is the home component we can start with, sorry. Home components we can start with. Again, going back here and saying replace it with home. That's it. So we got the home component. Let's go for the next one. Uh, after home, I think we have other components, other screens. Uh, dashboard is our home. Next one is properties. This is like a list of properties you can think of. So this is going to be like home and then, so sorry. This is like a home and this is like properties, like this. Wonderful. So. This is going to be like properties, uh, that's it. Uh, home, we are having home, we are having login, we are having properties, that's it. Okay, so let's go back and copy this one more time and say this is going to be like add property. <coughs> add property, that's it. So this is going to be like home and we can say add property. Later on we are going to modify this. Huh? So for now, we just have to have something into the components and that's the reason why we are doing it. This is like add property. What else do we need? Property details as well. So let's go back here and say this is property details. This is like a property details again, going back and say this is property details screen. We don't need that add, replace it. We are done with the property details. Okay, what else? I think uh, property, add property, add property. Then let's go for the users. So going back to the properties and copying this and say this is users which is going to be like properties again, and then say users. That's it. So this is the user screen. I think uh, we need to have user details, right? Huh. User details. So let's copy this and say this is user details. And right inside this, users, let's paste it and say this is user details. OK, here we are. <coughs> hmm. This is user details. What else we are missing? Uh, da, 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 da. I think there is a booking screen as well, right? So there is a booking. Okay, I think that's the last screen that we need to work on. So this is going to be like bookings.jsx. This is going to be like users. And then this is bookings. Okay, so we have got all the screens added here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we have covered all nine components here, all nine screens here. Wonderful. So now that we are kind of uh, having all of them ready, now we can start adding them one by one and see how do we deal with them, okay? Now pay attention to this. Uh, what happens here is, uh, I, if I go for app.js, we can show only one component, only one screen at a time. 
we already talked about that earlier, you know. Oh, by the way, we need to add that bootstrap first. Oops, sorry. There it is. So we need to add the bootstrap. Sorry, that's a git bootstrap. And we need to add it here. So for now, again, I'm going to copy this, go back to my HTML, index HTML, and we'll put it here. Another one for JavaScript, I'll put it here. Wonderful. So now that we are having the uh, bootstrap here, <coughs> I was saying, like in this particular case, we'll start with the container. Okay. Now in this particular case, we can decide or we can show only one component at a time. Right. This is the problem that we have to fix. Now, how do we fix this problem? We have got nine different components, right? But we want to show only one at a time based on the user's choice. Which means, if you look at Ghana.com here, you saw that when you click on trending song, you see only trending songs here. If you click on old songs, you can see only old songs. Similarly, <clears throat> without reloading the page, we want to change one component with another component or one screen with another screen. So how do we do this? To do this, we are going to use something called as a React Router. React Router is the package that is going to help me to do all of that switching, all of that navigation. So let's see how it has to be done. In the React, Naviga uh, in the React Router, you can start with installation. So getting started, not this one. I'm going to go for, uh, do I have an option here? OK, we'll go for getting started here. And uh, we'll start with no. Do you have tutorial? I don't care. Uh, I, I need to start with installation screen here. Uh, if we are having it, that would be better. If it is not, then we can use it directly. I want you to see this where it is. Where is that? OK, these guys have removed it, I believe. Or maybe we can directly go back to GitHub. You can directly start with yarn add, and then you can start getting it. But I want you to see this so that it will be easy for you. Mm, this is tutorial. This is the latest branch that we are using. It's called the 5.0 setup. This is what we are looking for. npm install create React DOM. This is not needed. This is what we are going to add, React Router DOM. Uh, we don't use npm. We talked about that. We are going to use yeah. yarn. So you can say yarn add. A React Router DOM. Um, should I? I mean, I already are having it in, in this cache. So better, I can add React Redux, Redux JS slash Toolkit, Axios, React Toastify. Bootstrap is not needed. Bootstrap is something that we already have added. And then I think all of them we are going to use eventually. And it's there in the cache. So let me add all of them. Okay. Right now, the one that we are going to use is React Router DOM. After that, later, when we are done with this, when we want to go for global state, we'll add Redux and Redux Toolkit. Axios, you already have used it for consuming the REST APIs. Toastify is used for showing that message. You remember I showed that earlier? So that the one which shows on the right top corner. So that is the one that we will see there. Uh, Bootstrap has already been added. So let me add all of that stuff. Out of that, the important thing here is the React Router DOM. This is the one that we are going to use okay, for now. It's good that it's in my cache so I can get all of them installed at once. I don't have to install them one after another. It takes time to do that. You see this. So let's spend some time in initial setup. And once everything is set up, the next thing is going to be like adding the screens one after another. That's it. So let's see if we can get the job done. I think it's almost done. Wonderful. Done. So now that it has been added, React Router DOM has been added. Now let's go for adding all the routes for our application. You already have learned Express, I believe, and you already know what is a route. A route is nothing but in Express is the combination of method, URL, and it's a handler, right? So you say app dot get URL and then comma uh, request and receive, and you put that call back there, right? That is called as a handler. That handler is associated with the URL and the HTTP method. This is the same concept that we are using here. And to do this, we are going to go for our application right here and start adding something called as a React Routes. So how do we do this? To do this, we have to go for finding out all the necessary details. I mean, why am I asking you to look at the documentation? This is a kind of a bread and butter for you. Now listen to me carefully. 
if you are a developer you have to look at the documentation all the time documentation is your bread and butter you know so every time it's always better to refer the documentation because you never know what is going to change in the next version so whenever you are doing something it's better you look at the current version in the documentation and then write the code accordingly another reason in fact uh, earlier the react router 5.0 was having a completely different structure 6.0 is completely changed it so if you do not use the documentation you will not know and your application will eventually stop working so it's always better to look at the latest version not only for this i'm saying all the time whenever you are using any technology not it's not something only for react it's for everything you are developing java always use the java documentation if you are using react uh, if you are using express always read the express documentation so every library has its own documentation which is what we are referring here for react dom so in react dom if you look at this it says if you want to create this you have to start with something called as uh, this is something which is a long cut uh, there is a shortcut as well but even uh, essentially we are going to use something called as a browser router and that browser router will help us to create a kind of a container for all of our routes so what i'm trying to tell you here is like you have to first go back to your index.js somewhere here and import something called as browser router this is what it has been shown here browser router so come back here and say something called as browser router this is the browser router we have to wrap uh, uh, we uh, we have to use as uh, uh, you have to use it as a wrapper wrapper to wrap the whole application do you notice that i am using the browser router and inside this browser router we are adding the app what does it mean the whole application will get added inside the browser router now browser router is same as your express dot router you already have used that function remember and inside the router you add all the different routes router dot get router dot post router dot put you already have done that something similar we are doing here with the help of something called as browser routers now once you have that browser router here you go to that app and then start not this one then start defining all of your routes now how do you add this here <coughs> so when you are inside this you have to create <coughs> something called as a routes so this is the one that is again you are kind of getting it from react router dom by the way that browser router we also have imported from the react router dom the one that we installed last time so going back here and say these are my routes which routes this is my first route you know in this first route we are going to say the router is going to have the path path here for me is going to be something like uh, we'll start with the login so maybe i can say you can start with directly login and within this login i mean for this login i'm going to start this component called as an element and then i can say for this i want to use my login component <coughs> login component it's not using that automatically for some reason no problem i can import it manually for now this is going to be like login isn't that login that we have created what is the name of it it's a login isn't it it should have but for some reason it is not i don't care so this is where we are going to say screens slash login and this is the login script okay so this is going to start with the login script let me copy this and say this is for register and then we can say this is register uh, it should have but it is not for some reason no problem i can say this is register i can say this is register okay now let's see what happens here i'm going to go back and start my application right now and we'll see what happens oops right here i'm going to go back and say localhost 3000 this is our application so if you look at this application right now i don't see any problem but i don't see anything here either now what's the problem actually it should have shown me something it's not showing anything right now because if you look at the routes you can see that your first path i mean you don't have anything at the slash what you are having uh, starting with is the login if you do not pass anything if you just say something like a path it is going to start by default the login screen do you see what am i saying here so the path empty means it's the initial route so probably i can say that this is like a login i want to start with you don't have to but i'm just giving you an example here so if you do not pass anything it is going to start with the login this is the default one now how do i go from login to register then to go from login to register you have to go back here and say something like a register do you see that it has gone from login to register 
But did you notice something? Let me go back. Did you notice something? I think better for me to put it here so you can see what I want you to see. When I'm going from login to register like this, watch what happens here on this particular part, okay? If I see this, did you see that? It has a reloaded the page, right? In case of Ghana, that doesn't happen. You see, look at this icon. And if I go from here to here, is it loading? No, it's not. So we have to do something so that we can go from login to register without, without loading the page, right? How do we do this? I'll show that now. So going back to the uh, login page somewhere here, and let's design this quickly. We already have designed it earlier, so I don't think we'll face trouble for uh, trouble while designing the screen again. Uh, before we do this, I'm going to go back to index.css and use that dot page header that I used in all my components, all my screens. I'll say that this is going to be like text aligned to center. I'll add the margin, sorry, I'll add the margin of 10, what the heck? I'll add the margin of 10 pixels. That's it. So uh, I think the login will come in the center because we already have used in all my components, all my screens. Okay. Now that we are in the login screen, sorry, we are in the login screen, let's design it quickly. We last time said that we'll create a row and we'll create three columns, right? One, two, three. And we'll design that in the middle column. Uh, if you want, you can change it to, let's say, two and two. That's going to be like four. So remaining eight will be given to the uh, middle one. I mean, choice is yours. This is something that you can take care of. Right now, I'm okay with this. So first thing first, I'll go for div, div dot form. That's like div with the class form. Again, div dot mb3, which is gonna have a bottom three uh, three m's, or you can say three emphasis. Okay, right here we can go for a label and say this is email that I'm looking from user. This is input form dash control, and this is where we can say it's an email, right? We have to copy this one more time for password. We are almost done. So this is like a password. This is also like a password, okay? Below this, we'll add two buttons. Uh, I think we'll add only one button for now. Button, btn, success. And we'll say that this is kind of a login, okay? This is how my screen would look like. I think this is too big, isn't it? So better for me to uh, just keep it as 333. That's sufficiently good. So I have a login, I'm sorry, I have an, I have a email, I have a password, okay? Now, I think uh, we have to have a kind of a message to the user saying, hey, if you don't have an account, go to the registration screen. So going back here, uh, let me add a message. What should I add? Let's add adding a div and say, uh, don't have an account. Okay, if you don't have an account, don't worry. Just go and say, register here. Now, naturally, when I say register here, it has to be hyperlink. Right? The hyperlink which will go from one screen to another screen. This is how we are going to go for. Now, unfortunately, if I use an anchor like this one and uh, say that this is uh, eventually, you saw that last time, like if I wanted to go from one to another screen, maybe I can say register here. And if I say something like slash register, this will work, no doubt in that. Look at this. I'm in the login screen. If I click on that, it's going to register screen. But Ah, it's kind of reloading it because it sends the whole request and that's the reason it's loading the whole page again. I don't want to load the whole page. I just want that screen to replace it with register. I mean login screen to re replace it with register. To do this, instead of using anchor tag, we are going to use a something called as a link. Link is not something like HTML will provide. Link is something which will be provided by, look at this, it's going to get from React Router DOM. This is called as a static navigation. Static navigation means you are navigating without clicking a button or without uh, using an event handler. So when you use this link, it will automatically go from here to there. Where do you want to go to? So I'm going to say to register. Now watch what happens. This is the beauty of using router, uh, React Router. So going back here, and if I click on that register screen, look at this one here, eh? so you can see whether it is reloading or not. So if I click on register, boom, did you see that? It Did it reload? No, it did not reload. It did not reload because we are not using the anchor tag. We are using the link. Link tag is provided by React Router for static navigation. This is called as static navigation. Do you understand this? Wonderful. Now, uh, let's say uh, this is the UI for my uh, login screen. I think uh, they are very close to each other. 
So going back here in the button and say MT2. So I think there will be small gap created and it looks better. So if user doesn't have an account, user will click on that and user will come on the registration screen, which is very simple. We already have designed it last time. So going back to the email registration screen, somewhere here, where are you? Here it is. And then we can design the similar screen here. And good thing here is I can copy and paste few things because the screen is an extension to the login screen. This is going to have almost everything what login was having, except it will have some more fields. Like for example, uh, do, 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 here it is. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. This is going to be like the first name, which is of type text. So this is like a first name. Let's go for the last name. We are having email. That's OK. Along with the password, we need one more. That is confirm password. You know, confirm password. And this is also a password. So I think registration screen look like OK. Oh, that's not a link. It's not available. Let's import it. And now I can see the registration screen is also ready. Now, of course, this is not like a, you don't have an account. It's like already have an account. Log in here, right? So probably instead of saying that, I can say already, I'm sorry, already have an account. Then it's not like a register. You can say log in here. And where you want to go to? That's a slash because we already have defined here that none means it's a slash. So it's by default the case, right? So either you can say this or you can define it one more time and uh, use it for both of them. Choice is here. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's a better way to do it. To start with, we can use this as a, a split one. A split in the sense we are defining it twice. Either you can go for slash, you still will go to the login, or you say slash login, and you still will able to see the same screen. So I'm going to go back here in register. For me, it makes total sense to say slash login. Okay. Now, the good thing about here is, if you look at that, if I click on the login here, it will go back to the login. If I click on this, it will go back to the register. Do you see the performance? It's awesome, isn't it? It's not login though, it is kind of register. So maybe I can say register, sign up, whatever that you want to go for. So now that my registration is done, if I click on the register, I want to go back to my login screen, right? The only difference here is without doing anything, user will go to the login. And uh, with, with this, user will have to enter all the details, click on the register. And if only registration successful, I want to go back to login screen. At this moment, I'm not going to call any of the APIs. All I'm trying to say here is there is a button, which means there has to be a function. So it's going to be like const on a register, something sort of that. <coughs> now, this is the register button. Uh, sorry, this is the register on register function, which will be called on the click of that button. OK, of course, uh, for this, we'll have to create all the states that we created earlier. Right. So maybe I can start with const. Uh, something like the first name we did that last time said the first name using use a state and this is an empty string okay so this is the first name this one here is the last name again this is going to be like last name then we have the email so maybe I can say this is an email set email sorry email uh, what else do we have password and confirm password Okay, almost done. So this is going to be like the password, and this is going to be like the confirm password. Okay, here we are. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Uh, again, do not forget when you are getting the users or when you are expecting user to give you an input, you will have to come back here and say on change e, and then we can say set first name e dot target dot value. That's it. So let me copy this here and paste it all the other places set last name wonderful let's go back here and say set email you know next is the set password set password and lastly this is like the confirm password so set confirm password that's it we are done now that user has uh, you know filled up all the information that's what i believe We'll go back here and we'll check if the user has filled all the details, like what we did last time. If uh, first name dot length is going to be equal equals to zero, that means user has not filled the first name, right? So what do we have to do? We have to show an alert. Alert. Should I say please? <laughs> okay, this time I'll say it. Please enter first name. I hate it, but still, please enter the first name. Okay. 
I need to call this function on click of that button. So let's copy this and paste it somewhere here. Where is button? Here it is. On click of this, put that function's name. So if I go back and click on that without entering anything, oh, it's showing me an alert saying, hey, please enter first name. You know, this alert doesn't look good, as I said last time. And that's the reason we are going to use something called as react to Stify. Remember in that yarn add command, this was one of the packages that I've installed. React Toastify it's called as. Very nice. I mean, it's very simple as well. So this is how the React Toastify is going to show the messages. Like this is the style that we will prefer. Uh, the one is like primary, the other one is like error, uh, maybe something like a warning, success. Same bootstrap fundamentals that we are using here, you know. So this is something that we want to use. How do we use this? To use this, you first have to install it. I think installation already has been done, React Toastify. We used that yarn add React Toastify command last time. Now that it is done, all we have to do here is, you have to import these two lines. One is like importing the React Toastify functionality by uh, adding something called a toast container inside your app.js. So you have to add that toast container here. And then we have to import the CSS as well, because the CSS is the one which shows the message with those styles, primary, uh, error, warning, success, so on and so forth. So let me go back here, copy those two lines, going back to the app somewhere here and pasting them here you know? so this is what the step number one is step number two here is just copy this and paste it at the end of it wherever you want to paste it doesn't matter just make sure that it is added there this is not needed at this point we'll add it in the other places okay step number one install it step number two configure it inside the app.js step number three if i want to show a message let's say for example in registration if user has not uh, enter that first name instead of showing that alert I want to use <coughs> toast sorry toast toast will get imported from react toastify say toast dot you decide whether it is an error or whether it's a warning I think it's better I can show it as an error so if it is an error look what happens now so going back here if user has not entered first name and if user clicks on register boom I get a message saying hey please enter first name are you getting the point so it looks way better than the alert message. You know, I don't know whether you agree with me or not, but I really like to use that one instead of using an alert. It's your choice. You decide whether you want to use it or not. You know. So this is the second thing. Last name. Please enter last name. Again, else if I'll go for another one. That's an email. Please enter email. Another one. What do we have? Password. Sorry. Uh, please enter password. Sorry. Please enter password. Another one, I think uh, we have a confirm password as well. All of them are mandatory for us. I mean, we will check those on, uh, only those which are mandatory. This is going to be like, please enter name. Please confirm the password. <coughs> Else if, ha, huh, this is the last one. If password does not match with confirm password, we can say uh, password does not match whatever that's a standard message that we are having and if everything goes well then we can say call a register api i don't want to do it right now i'll just assume that you will do it later with the help of actions at this point i'll assume user has called a registration api user has uh, so the registration api has created or registered the user successfully returned a success message and that's the reason i want to go from here to login screen back to login screen now let's see how it has to be done I showed you one way to go from one screen to another screen statically by using link tag. You remember that? Yes. We used it twice, once in login screen, the second one in, in this registration screen, okay? Now this is the dynamic login. Dynamic means when you click on a button, you are doing something uh, dynamically or at the run time. This has to be done in a little bit different way. To do it, we first have to use another, uh, so something called as a reactor hook. Earlier today we talked about the hooks. Hooks are the special functions. So here we have to say, get the navigation, uh, get the navigation object or navigation hook by saying uh, const navigate, which is going to be equals to use navigate, use navigate. This is the one. This is going to give you a, a reference to the navigation function. One more time use state would return an array with zeroth position being a reference to that value and the second value uh, second position will be reference of that function which is used for setting the value or updating the value 
on the other hand when you say use navigate use navigate returns only one value which is the reference to the function which will help you to go from one screen to another screen so it's only one value that you are going to capture it's not an array so you don't need a destructuring de like what we did earlier this is a simple one reference it is returning it's called as a navigate name can be anything i'm going to use it as a navigate whatever it returns it is the reference to that function which will help us to go from one to another screen meaning if i want to go back so call registration api maybe i can say check the status this is what you will do later uh, and towards the end of it if uh, success means if the registration has done successfully uh, go to sorry go to login screen so i'm assuming it's a successful registration so I'm going to call this function called as a navigate and say, hey, go back to login screen. Okay. Last time when I wanted to do statically without taking a button into picture, if I wanted to go from one to uh, one to another, what did we do? We used a link tag. That's called as static navigation. This is called as dynamic navigation. We are doing it at the run time by using a function reference, which is written by use navigate function. Let's see if it works. Going back to my registration screen here, so this is going to go away in a minute. And there we can say, first name, if I do not do it, it's eventually going to show me an error. So probably I'll have to fill in all the details. So I can say Amit, say Kulkarni, Amit at the red test.com, password is test. I'm going to deliberately enter a wrong password. You know, Let's see if that validation really works. So if I click on register, it says, hey, password do not match. You know, Fine, 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 no worries. So if I click on the, I'm sorry, if I enter the right password and if I say register, boom, it has gone back to the login screen did you see that yes. wonderful uh, just before going there i mean it didn't understand like why it has gone there so just uh, before we go there i'm going to say like it is successful so i'll put a message saying hey uh, yes successfully registered a new user so at least we'll get a confirmation that hey, something has done successful that's the reason we are going back to the previous screen one more time quickly Amit Kulkarni, Amit at the .com. Password is test, password is test. If I say register, yes, I can see uh, this is successfully registered a user, and that's the reason it's going back to the login screen so that user can log in with the correct credentials. Do you understand that? Yes. There are two ways you can switch the screens one, static, another one, dynamic. dynamic. It depends on you how you want to do it. So, this is a static navigation that will be going. Okay? Clear? Everyone clear? Yes. Wonderful. That's great. Okay, so now that we are done with this, I think uh, we'll have to go for the next part. The next part is like, yes, sir. Which one? Yeah, it depends actually where you want to go to. So if you look at the uh, if you look at documentation, there you can change the position of it to the right hand side as well. I'm sorry, left hand side as well. This is the default right hand side. You can take it in the middle. You can take it on the left. You can change the icon. You can change uh, or you can set your custom icons. Whatever that you want to do with documentation is there. Refer it and do it. Okay, <laughs> that's what I said. It's always better to refer documentation. Documentation has every damn thing there. You know, that's a default one that we are using. Okay, chal. Oh uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Just niche here, huh? No problem. Same thing that we have done earlier. It just, I think, uh, depending again on this. See, most of the times it all depends on the requirement where you want to show the error here or where you want to show error here. This is the old strategy. We are taking the newer strategy here. You know, so probably if you want to show it here, you just set that error. For example. I'll show you that in the login screen, how it has to be done, okay? So in the login screen, let's say uh, this is a uh, email and this is the password. I, I'm going to show that error here if it is not visible in that case, right? So what I'm going to do here is going back to the email screen and putting up one more error. This is the P for error for me. And I can say uh, this is going to be like mandatory. So if it is mandatory, I can say um, email is mandatory. Something sort of that, okay? Let's add a style and say the color of this is kind of, I'm so sorry, color of this is something like a red. This is the standard behavior in fact. So if it is an error, it has to be something like a red. And then I can say password is mandatory, okay? Now, the problem here is by default, both of them will be shown. 
right? So what do we want to do now? We want to go back and maintain two states. One is visible, I mean, one is for email, the other one is for password. Logic is something that you should apply here. For example, I can say, uh, is email empty to start with? Is email empty? I'm gonna go back and say this is gonna be like set email empty, which is gonna be like user status, I'm sorry, user state. To start with this, I'll say false. I mean, they are not empty, that's like initialization is what we are gonna go with. Or maybe we can start with true as well. So by default, they will be shown. Like this is mandatory, user will enter something, isn't it? So maybe I can go back here and say is email empty and then is password empty. Both of them will be visible here. Choice is again yours. Uh, it depends on how you want to implement it. This is how I'm implementing it right now. Now, I want to show this only when this uh, is password is empty, true. And this is em email is true. So this is something called as conditional rendering. Pay attention to this one. This is called as a conditional rendering. Conditional rendering means if the first condition is true, then only render it. For example, I would say, this is a JavaScript variable, is email empty. So this is JavaScript means we have to wrap it inside curly brackets. So we can say, if is email empty, means if we, is email entry is true, then and and, then render this paragraph. This is what we are saying. So this is called as a conditional render, okay? This is same for password as well. Is password empty and and, and just close it right after the paragraph. And this is something it will do the job by checking if the first condition is true or not. So if I go for it, both of them are visible. Why are they visible? Because both of them are true to start with. We set them as true. Let me check, change them to false to start with, you know, something like that. And you will see that both of them are invisible. Why are they invisible? Because it is false, okay? So choice is yours how you want to control it. Now let's do it like this. If I do not enter anything and if I click on login, I want both of them, I mean depending again, whether both of them are empty or not, we want to set them here. So how can we do this then? To do this, we can come back and say uh, const on login. This is where we can check if email code will remain same, not email. Is it email? Oh, so sorry. We'll have to first capture both of them, right? Email and the password. So we have to create email, set email. We did it in registration screen. We are doing it again for login screen. So const password, set password, use state empty, right? So we can say if email dot length is equal equals to zero, what does it mean? Email is in value, uh, email is empty. What does it mean then? We have to say, set email empty, huh? exactly, set email empty to true. The moment it becomes true, the message will automatically appear, right? This is what the logic here is. Else if, I mean, we are going step by step now. So if you want, you can go for this as well. So if, I mean, if you do not say else, both of them will take effect at the same time. If the password dot length is gonna be equal equals to zero, maybe I can just go back here and say set password empty is gonna be equals to true, right? So this is how we can check it. If it is equal to zero, then do this. Of course, I wanna call this function on click of that button, login, here it is. So we can say on click and this is the button. So now let's see what happens. Oh, sorry, to do this, we'll have to first take the input from user. So we'll have to come back here and say on change E, again it is set email E dot target dot value, that's it. Copy it and paste it inside the password and change that set email to set password. You are done. Now let's see what happens. Uh, this is there, just remove it. And if I click on login, boom, you can see both of them are invisible, okay? Now see this, because I'm entering the value, I mean, again, this is the kind of a shortcut that you can see here. Because I'm entering the value here, that means uh, the value cannot be empty or the length cannot be empty means I'm gonna check here if e dot target dot value uh, dot length is greater than zero then I'll just set that here itself set email empty as false if it is a zero let's do it in other ways if it is zero we'll set it to true and if it is not then I can set it to false 
This way, I can, uh, you know, it's like uh, killing two birds with one stone, something sort of that. So I'm going to go back here, copy this, and probably we can do the same thing here as well. So setting the password, and before I set the password, we'll check it and say set password empty to, and set em password empty is false, okay? So now going back here, let's refresh it. There is nothing inside, there is nothing inside. Now because I did not enter, you see, I'm getting both of them here. Now I can go back and say, uh, let's enter the value, amit at the rate test.com. Do you see that it automatically disappears? Password, if I say test, it disappears, okay? That's how we can take care of it. Now, I'm, it, this is not needed then because we already have taken care of that there. This is the shortcut that we have applied now. So we can go for uh, using our simple condition here, you know. Uh, if it is not this, if it is not this, um, it's not going to happen. But if you want to do this, I really love to do that. So I'm going to go back here and say again, toast.error. Please enter email. I'll have both of them. Please enter password. And if both of them are here, I mean both of them are validated, that they are not empty, then maybe I can say call login API. And once the API is called, I'm saying like check the set of success. And if it is success, I'm going to jump back to home home screen. We are going to the home screen. OK, no worries. I'm going to go back here and say, how do I go to home screen now? Should I go for login? I'm sorry, should I go for a static navigation or dynamic navigation? It has to be dynamic because we have to take a decision in buttons click event, you know? So to do this, first thing first, get navigation hook by saying const navigate is going to be equals to use navigate and if you want to go to home screen call api and check if it's success or not check it's a success if it is successful then only come back here and go to home screen go to home screen fine now how do you do that you say navigate to slash home that's it now look at this, I entered some data, if I say login, I'm on the home screen. For some weird reason, it's not showing anything on the home. Why is that? Oh, sorry, we don't have anything for home, how it can show, no? So that's the reason, it's showing nothing. Okay, no worries, let's define the rest of the screens. We did not define them yet. So let's define the rest of the screens, okay? So I'm gonna copy all of them and we'll start registering them here. Uh, help me, it's like home. Yeah, properties, property, I'm sorry, property details, then add property, users, user details, and then bookings, right? So we have got all of them covered. This is our home screen. Will you please show here? Oh my God, it's not. For some weird reason, it's not automatically importing it. No worries, we'll do it automatically for us. This is gonna be like home. Okay, now let's go back here and do it. So this is going to be like user details, fine. Users, maybe I can say properties. This is gonna be like property details. What am I missing? Bookings, are we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are missing something. Can you please check out? Add properties, wonderful. So this is gonna be like users. This is gonna be like properties. This is property details. And then this is going to be like bookings. And we are missing the add property. Add property, this is gonna be like add property, wonderful. Now let's go back and just put them in the right, uh, in the right uh, rules like this. This is where you are gonna show the properties. This is where you want to show the property details. This is where you want to show add property. This is where you want to go to the user screen. I'm sorry, users, what the heck, users. Then you are going to go for the user details. And lastly, this is booking screen. We have registered all of them that we are going to use eventually later. Now that we are having the home registered, I think if I click on login, I should see home here. And which is what it is working. This is what we are expecting, isn't it? Wonderful, now we are here. I think we need to work on the next part. What's the next part? If I look at my requirement, it seems like all of my screens are having 
navigation bar, isn't it? That's a navigation bar I want to have here. Okay, this calls a nav bar. I hope you already have used it. If you haven't, I'll show you how it, how it has to be done. Basically, this is the component I want to design. That's the beauty of using React. React uh, will not encourage you to copy and paste the code. It's better you just create a component and use that component wherever you want to go to, okay? So I'm here, I'm gonna go back to my component screen. Oh, there is no components directory. So I'm gonna go back here and say components, like we did earlier. Right inside this, I'll call this as navbar. This is where we are gonna create our navigation bar. As usual, nothing different, you know? So function navbar, which is gonna be equal to, oh, so sorry, which is gonna be equal to, as usual, return. To start with, it's gonna return a div. We are gonna modify that in a minute. And then we can go back and say export default navbar. That's it. Okay, so now that navigation bar is here, I think it's better for me to go for uh, on the bootstrap, going back to the documentation, and search for something called as navbar. This is the one. Navbar, it looks like this. Okay, this is the one that I'm gonna use. For now, I'm gonna copy and paste it, really. Don't wanna waste too much of my time into it. Uh, it's called as, not copy pasting, it's called as reuse. <laughs> okay, I'm going to reuse it. It's not needed. It's not needed. Yeah, uh, okay. This is uh, not bad, that's all right. Button is all right. It's not needed, button and all of that stuff. We are gonna remove it, it's not needed. Uh, this is where we can start with the home, which means I'm going to copy and paste this part. This isn't needed either. Let's remove that. <coughs> First thing, you cannot use class. You know, class has to be replaced by class name. Sorry, class name. Okay, wonderful. We are done. So now we have got our, com uh, our navigation bar here. This is my Airbnb. This is what we are going to say, my Airbnb. Right now we are having home as a component. It's not active, we'll just make it active later. Right now this is the home component that I'm having. This is not gonna work for sure. This is li, it's okay. I mean, uh, it's not the a, you saw that last time, right? It's not the anchor tag we have to use. It is link tag that we have to use, which has to be configured with the two. Two means here we have to go to slash home, right? This is something I'm gonna copy and paste it for all of my other, other menus. Like this is the home menu, this is the properties menu. <coughs> properties, I can say, I'm not sure. I think it was properties, I believe. Right, this is, the, some, this is something that we have configured last time for property screen. Then there is a user screen we are having. So this is going to be my users. And lastly, I think that is the, what am I missing? Bookings, and this is a booking screen, okay? And lastly, this is going to be, it's not a link anymore, or if you want, you can keep it, but uh, this is not going to be a link. Hold on, I'll just change it to a kind of a button. Yes, to a button, but that button, I want to, I want to consider this as a kind of a link. Should I? I think it's better we can do it with the link itself, and we'll change it later. This is going to be logout, you know? This is my navigation bar. Simple as that, there's nothing in fact. It's the same thing that we have used from the bootstrap. Now I wanna use it on my all the other screen. So I'm gonna go back to my home, home, home. Where are you? Okay, it's here. Inside my home, uh, above that home somewhere here, I'm gonna go back and say this is the nav bar. The nav bar is the component that we have designed. Let's see if it works. Going back here, and if I look at that bar, it is kind of showing me the nav bar on top. Right, so this is the nav navigation bar I'm having here. I think if I go back, um, there is, there is, there is, there is, here it is. There is another way, there is another uh, kind of, you can say the UI, or maybe you can say the options available. I think I'm gonna go with the dark theme and uh, BG dark is what I'm gonna use right now. So going back here, copying this and pasting into my navigation bar somewhere here. This is going to be like a role, and then we can go for, I'm sorry, theme, and this is going to be like BG dark. If I go for this, and if I look at my application, now that looks something, okay? The good thing here is, if you click on home, you'll go to home. If you click on properties, hey, where is the navigation bar? 
<laughs> Hold on. Uh, we have not added that in the home screen. Don't get confused. It's just like what we have to do here is going back to the home screen. I'm sorry, going back to the property screen somewhere here and adding that navigation bar. You know, it's as simple as that. That's it. You're done. So now if I look at this properties, it got it now. If I click on home, boom, look at that. It's the home screen. If I click on properties, yes, I'm on a property screen now. Go for the users. Ah, <laughs> it's gone. You know why it is gone? Because we never have added it. That's the only reason. Yeah, it's an bar. That's it. You are done. Yes, user also has got it. In the booking screen, it's missing. Going back to booking, where are you? Here it is. I'd rather, I'm, I think I should go for all the screens except, except login and register and paste it. I mean, isn't there any better way to do it? Yes, there is, but not right now. It requires a Redux to get implemented. So till that time, I think better we can just use this scheme. Okay, we go for property details, going back here and adding that now. Navbar, okay. Then we are having the it's not needed. User details is again, we can go for navigation bar like this. And probably users, we already are having it. Property details, we are having it. Properties, we are having it. Home, we are having it. Booking, we are having it. Add properties where we were missing. Let's add it here. Done. So all of our screens are now having navigation bar on top. You see, home, properties, uh, what's next? Uh, users, bookings, logout, we don't have it because logout is something we have to handle it differently. When I say differently, I hope you can understand, you have to go back to the login screen oh thank god you know so going back to navigation screen i mean it has to be handled in a different way for now just to uh, i mean this is because just it's a ui that's a reason just to start with it i'm gonna go for a slash login you know later on we have to modify this because uh, we have are you done with jw tokens huh. so you have to reset the token once user logs out you know so this is where we have to get a function and dynamically we have to go to login it's all right. For now, if I go say login, I kind of go to the login screen, click on that. I'm coming on the home screen. I can go from home to properties, to users, to bookings. And if I could click on logout, again, I can go back to login. Again, come back here. You can play this game for the rest of your life. <laughs> right now, I think that's pretty much that we are looking for. OK? Wonderful. Now that we are having home screen, I think we said that we will be showing. Where are you? Where are you? Here it is. We'll be showing some details. like. How many users you have? How many properties you have? How many bookings you have? So on and so forth. You decide what you want to add there. You know. So for now, I'm going to go back here inside home, and I'll create the placeholders. You know, when we are done with the uh, you know the backend integration, we'll try to get the details and throw them here. For now, I'm going to go back to home, and right inside this, we'll create a div row plus mt on the top. I will add some more gap. Let's say mt5. And below this, I will add four different columns. For now, I'll just add some dummy data. Later on, we'll see like how do we uh, you know, add a few things there. So this is the home. Below this, we are having four columns. Every column will have two things. One is going to be like div, uh, let's say some information, like for example, users. Uh, how many users do you have? And the count. So maybe I can say this is like a count. Count is, let's say, there are 100 users in your website, for example. This is how it will look like. Okay. I'll wrap it inside one more div like this. And let's copy this structure and put it in all the places like this way, here, here, and here. Precisely what we are trying to say here is we are going to have all of this information there. You know, now this looks really pathetic. I know we'll fix it. Don't worry. Eventually we'll fix it. Uh, now, what I want you to observe here is. Don't you see that it's kind of repetitive thing that we are adding here? Does it click and does it ring a bell? What should we do? We should create a component. I hope you agree on that, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to the component and right inside this, I will go back and say this is going to be like a dashboard item. So every single dashboard item will have some different information to show. This is what I'm going to go for, OK? So a function, we call this as a dashboard item, which is going to be returning the structure, which I copied that last time. 
ha i don't want to hard code this you know how do you solve this problem we have to take props maybe i can say title and a value title is something like users or something you know and the value is something that you want to display here naturally we'll have to uh, add some kind of nice uh, colors and other stuff we'll do that later so maybe i can say export details dashboard item this is what we want to go for right okay uh, we also want to but we'll do that later for now i think this is the one that we will start with uh, of course we'll have to go back to the home and not something like this we have to add that dashboard item here so this is the dashboard item where the title sorry the title is going to be like users and the value is going to be equals to say 100 when I mean, you can put that in string as well doesn't matter like this you don't have to worry about copy pasting all of that stuff we have a component for this and that's the beauty of using react okay so this is like users maybe i can go and say this is like the properties you own or properties you are having on your application sorry properties uh, maybe I can go for bookings. What else can I show? Mm. Ha! <laughs> why we are running the why we are running this whole application? Why we want to develop this whole application for the sake of money? <laughs> so revenue. How can we forget that? You know what is the revenue? Maybe I can say hundred million dollars. Who will? <laughs> we are not going to lose anything just to write it down. You know why not million? Let's say why not million. <laughs> hundred billion dollars you know that's all right so I think then we have to exaggerate the numbers as well you know maybe I can say it's like a 10,000 bookings per day for example how many properties do we have let's say hundred thousand properties we are having how many users maybe hundred thousand users we are having wow look at that revenue you know it's jaw dropping hundred billion dollars wonderful who cares anyways so I think we are kind of uh, getting the essence of it like this is the item that we have developed We'll put some uh, nice user interface later. Right now, this is what we are kind of creating as a placeholder. Going back to the property screen right here, we want to show the list of properties. As we said last time, you know, we have to show the list of properties in a tabular form. There has to be a button to add a property. And then clicking on that add button, we'll have to add a new property. Are you all <coughs> able to visualize it? Yes. For a visualization, you don't have to close your eyes. Eh? <laughs> it's only there. Don't close the eyes. Okay, so here we are on the property screen. So I have to close all of this stuff and then go back to the property screen here. So first thing first, we need to have a button. Sorry, we need to have a button. Button, I'll order, uh, we'll use it as primary, for example, and say add property. So this is where it will appear on the left hand side. You click on that and it will go to, it will go to add property i think if it is going to be the case we don't have to click it i mean it's just like we don't have to add any logic on top of it it's just like we are going from one screen to another screen why do we need a button then we can use it as a link like we did we did earlier so in this case we want to go to add dash property simple as that property and if i go back click on that add property you are in add property now that's how simple it is I think because we are here in the odd property, it makes sense for us to first design this screen. Okay, so let's get this thing done. Add property, add property, where are you? Here it is. It's not add property, it's going to be add property. It's much better to read it. Okay, so now we want to get the property details, right? So how do we get the property details? I think uh, we need to get some, uh, maybe dummy details for now. We can think of like what details that we need and then we can change the things accordingly. But basic details, we already captured last time. We have to put them here one more time. So we're going to start with D form right here. And in this D form, we'll have to start with the basic information. Like this is going to be my MB3, like what we did last time. Uh, but we'll start with that <coughs> label, which is going to be like title. Input, which is going to be like form control. And then we can say this is going to be my uh, input for me. Uh, this is going to be my in uh, a title for that property. OK. Now, after title, I think we were talking about the description. So let's put the description here. Uh, description is going to be a text area, right? It's not needed for this. We can go for rows. We can say like five rows more than sufficient. You know, So that's a text area. OK. Now, the next one, I think we are looking for 
address, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'll go for an address, something like this. And then da, 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 da. I think it's better for me to put the text area here like what we did last time. And we'll put uh, two rows here, you know, to start with. How does it look like? No, oh, not bad. So we are having description, we are having titles. Okay, uh, address, sorry. I think address is more than sufficient then. We can go for a city, a state, and a zip code like what we did last time. So we are gonna create a row, we are gonna create a call. And within this, we have to go for copy pasting this other stuff. I think uh, this is the one. Is this the one? Yeah, that's the one. So this is where we will get the city, right? This is where we want to get the state. And this is where we want to get the zip code. This is used for showing this information on screen later for users. So user can understand where that state, uh, where that property is available, you know, something sort of that. Mm, I think we have to take some other details as well. We forgot to do that. Maybe this is the title, that's fine. But we have to also take the information about the uh, user as well, I think, should we? No, I don't think so, it's all right. We are going to manage it. It's not like users are managing it. We are gonna manage it, so we don't have to. Uh, city, state, zip code. I think <laughs> last time we talked about that. So let's get those details as well. Which details am I talking about? You remember? Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about the same, guest rooms. Yes, the next one. Bedrooms. <laughs> Sorry? Ha, bathrooms, of course. <laughs> you remember that. Okay, fine. So that's okay. We are having number of guest rooms, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms. And uh, lastly, towards the end of it, I think we should have only two buttons, you know. Dev MB3. I forgot to add that all the places. I should add them. Otherwise, they are so close to each other, can't even read that. Okay, so now we are having two buttons, BTN, uh, we have to add and we have to cancel. So we can say button success, BTN dash success. We can go back here and say save, sorry. And then we can go for cancel. Cancel means it's a danger, sorry, danger. We know after this, we want to add a uh, uh, maybe a space of two pixels and I think we are done now that we are having the cancel button we can go from cancel to property screen I mean this is kind of simple navigation there is no need of having any logic in place why am I using the button then I can use the link yes where to sorry to where should I go to slash properties that's it you are done see how simple is that so clicking on that save you are going to go back to the properties. You don't have any properties yet. It's all right. You can click on add property and you can add a property. See how simple is that? Of course, when you click on save, you have to again go back to property screen, but this has to be dynamic navigation. And you know how to handle dynamic navigation. Yes, first you will have to go for adding that navigation, or sorry, navigate, which is going to be equals to use navigate and have a button uh, have a button skip event handler it's like const um, on save you i mean right now i'm adding it dy uh, directly but you know you have to add some kind of uh, validations there and then you have to call the api so this is where we want to go for slash properties again okay calling this function on the button click event on click on save Okay, so I think we are almost done here. So clicking on that save, you can come back to the same property screen. Clicking on this, you're coming back again on the add, add property screen. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think for these th uh, these nine, we have to again define all the state members. We have to again define them for on change, right? Let's do it quickly. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna go for the first one. What is the first one? I think this is title set title hmm. it's going to be like use state empty and do it for eight more times okay title next is description description so again set description okay next one uh, address this is going to be like set address next one city okay next one 
state sorry it's going to be like state this is going to be like the state what else uh, zip code I be, i'm sorry zip code oh, zip oh zip <laughs> zip code zip code okay zip code okay that's going to be zip code wonderful ha huh, guest rooms guest rooms set guest rooms okay then bedrooms okay set bedrooms and lastly the bathrooms okay bathrooms bathrooms okay now last part we just have to configure all of them on click of all the inputs here we are okay this is on change e set title e dot target dot value that's it copy and paste sorry we use it okay so this is going to be like set description what the heck am i writing set description okay next one is address fine set address okay the next one here is the city set city next one is the state set a uh, state okay next one is the zip code and oh there are three more okay fine so this is going to be like set guest rooms okay next one set bedrooms and lastly this is the one set bathrooms okay set bathrooms that's it we are almost done with that now that we are having all of them i think uh, you know this you have to add the if else condition here will you do that on your own even if you say no you still have to do it <laughs> you know so probably you will add that here i'll just add a note here you know add navigation sorry navigation uh, not navigation validation navigation i already have added add validation here okay so i'm kind of done with that i'm going to go back here in the properties and we have to create a nice tabular structure here right so to create a tabular structure i have to have some data i don't have api integration done yet so for now for testing purpose i'm going to create a new directory like what we did yesterday dummy and right inside this i will say properties sorry dot json here we are going to put some properties okay now <coughs> okay fine i want to do something but let's not okay so here we are i think uh, we need to get some properties i can say the title which is going to be equals to property 1 shall we we should <laughs> I'll show you the better way to do it. So, chat GPT. <laughs> I see the power of it. Okay, this is what I like about that. It's not like we are asking chat GPT to write the code for us, but see, when we are writing the data here, data is something which is uh, you have to think about generating the titles and all of that stuff. Who will do it? I'm gonna do it in a different way. Can see like this way. Okay, think about this. I'm gonna go back. and i'll say generate generate how many let's say a 10 <coughs> property details details in uh, in this format or in uh, in format or with fields look at that okay okay uh, yeah i forgot that <laughs> i'm not used to it chat gpt i don't use it in fact i'm not a fan of chat gpt i develop application like chat gpt but i don't use chat gpt a lot yeah i think uh, i should have done that oh i lost it here it is generate a json 
with 10 properties. Ah. <laughs> you see, <laughs> this is what I'm looking for. <laughs> love it. For this, I love ChatGPT. The rest of the thing, ChatGPT is a waste of time. And I don't encourage you to use it for your coding as well. I myself don't use it any time. I just use it for data generation because for data generation you don't need any brain. Push to You should feel ashamed to <laughs> copy it from there, you know. That's a reason. Anyways, this is what I'm looking for. Tranquilly, where is it? California. Who cares? Anyways, we don't care about that. What am I looking for is the data. So I'm gonna say import, you know properties from dot dot dummy properties dot json we got the data right <coughs> please pay attention this is how you have to do it don't directly use our properties like what we did yesterday henceforth you have to first bring that into the state the reason behind it here is to start with it you will not have anything you, will, you are going to call an api to get the properties from your server you know, so once you get it, you have to render the screen. And if you want to render the screen, it has to be present inside your state. And that's the reason what I'm saying here is, instead of saying properties, I can say property data. And I'm, I'm gonna create a new, uh, I mean the new state member called as a properties, properties, set properties. And then we can say use a state, and this is the property data, properties. Okay, here it is. So this properties will be a kind of starting with or initializing with the property data which is there inside my JSON file. That's fine, but do not directly use it because otherwise next time it will not use. I mean, next, next time it will be completely empty. If you want to render it after calling an API, this is the way you should do it, okay? So don't forget that. Okay, now that we are having the properties, I think uh, we should go back here, sorry, we should go back here and uh, create a tabular structure. We won't be able to fit all of these things, so we'll decide like which important fields are there that we have to generate. We have to put them in a uh, in a uh, table like this. I think uh, we should select Tit description. There's no way we can add it because it's going to be very long. So let's add title, add uh, address, city, state, zip code. I think that's more than sufficient, right? So let's go back here and create a table. This is like a table dot table dot table dash script. First table is for table, second table is for the class table from Bootstrap, and third table is like table dash script. T head, we can say TR, TH, uh, should I? Okay, I say hash, hash is like a number, you know, you can start with. Then the title, title of that property. Next, we said address, where is it? That's the city that will add it after that. State and the zip code. And after this, we should say actions, you know, because we are have to we have to take two actions. You have to either delete it, like Sir said, and another one is like show the details of it, you know. So we have to have those actions inside this last column. Okay, that we are done. Now we can go for the T body. Uh, you know that after T body, the TRs should be generated by 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 math function. We did it yesterday. You know, we don't have to write it by hand. We have to do it like this. Okay, curly brackets. What should I stay? Properties dot map. This is where we are going to take property right inside this, and then return a tr, and then we can go for the rest of the things. Now, prop, uh, when you are going for map, map returns two things. It returns the data as well as the index for that data. Why am I using index? Because you see, the first uh, first column is where we need to show. What is the index that we are using? It's not the ID that I'm looking for. It's the index that I'm looking for, you know? So what I'm gonna go for here is like the TD and then index plus one because index starts from zero. We wanna start from one. So one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. Okay, the first one is the title. So let's go back here and say this is the, pro I'm sorry. This is the property and property, single property. And then we can get some property details here, okay? So first one is the title. Second one is the address. Third one, city, state, a zip code, and I'm sorry, a zip code. And after that, there are actions. So I don't need these two. I can go back here 
I need two buttons. So button btn btn dash. Uh, want to delete something? That means I'll go for a danger. But when I say danger or when I say simple button, it's going to be a little bit bigger. I don't want that big button. I'm going to say btn dash sm sm for small. That's a small version of the button. And then we can say delete. This will delete. Uh, this will create a delete button. We need one more um, details. I think it's better we can go for a primary. And this is like details. Okay. Both of them will be too close to each what? Too close to each other. So let's go back here and say m e. Let's say two is more than sufficient. So if I look at that, boom, it started showing a very nice tabular format like that, right? Only thing here is, oh, they're very close to each other. No worries. Going back to the table and then putting it and say empty, I'm sorry, empty two will be all right. No, empty five is good. It's going to be good. So if I look at this, huh, now that started looking really good. So now I'm, I'm having all of that stuff, like the title of this, address of this. It looks wonderful, isn't it? So you can add a new property, come back, and then you can see the list of properties here. Now, when you click on add delete, uh, I can't do it right now because, you know, I mean, I can. It's not like I can't. I can. Or let's do it. So precisely, uh, this is not going to delete anything from the JSON file. Huh? It is temporary. You can understand that, right? So how do we do this? That's the reason why should you put this inside the state? Because unless you modify the state, the screen will not render. We talked about it earlier today. So what I'm going to do here is I'll go, uh, go for a function called as on delete. The only question here is I have to delete it. I mean, I have to delete a particular row. So when I say delete, I need to pass the index of that row which I want to delete. OK, so this is the index. So what I'm going to do here, oh, JavaScript array function is you, are you done with them? If not, then this is the way you can do it. Delete a. Uh, delete a delete a what should I say delete a property okay I mean to be very honest when I say delete property it's like deleting an item from an array so delete a property by saying uh, properties dot splice the function name is called the splice you heard about that before yeah. very good so you can say index and one that means delete one item from that index that's called the splice function now, when you modify that, do not forget to call set properties and then set the properties again. Because unless you modify the properties, you cannot render the screen again. <laughs> That's the reason why we have to do it. Now, this is the on delete. When you click on this button, delete. When you click on this button, on click, you have to use this and say, call this function and pass index. You have to pass the index by getting that arrow function. So you can understand that on click of this, the function will be called. And then you need to pass an index. What's the difference between this and this, the one that we used earlier? Like if I say on delete like this, what's the difference between this? When you do this, you won't be able to see which index you are going to, I mean, you need to delete the row from. Whereas when you do this, you can understand I am kind of picking that uh, event and I'm calling this function explicitly by passing the required yes. index. That's the reason why you should take this, uh, take this in a different manner like that. So if I go back and click on this, oh, it's not doing it. It's not doing it. Why it's not doing it? It's the problem of uh, setting that array. When you are changing the array, you have to go for something called as a rest. Uh, it's called as a rest of the I mean, a rest operator inside the JavaScript. It's going to be like getting all the values from properties and creating a new array like that. This is only the adjustment we are having to uh, till we are calling the API. Once the API is called, everything would work automatically for us. So going back here, and if I already have done that, say refresh. If I click on delete, it's, go, it's getting deleted. Do you see that? If I click on this, it, get, it gets deleted, 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 deleted. OK, I deleted all of them. When I deleted all of them, I should not see that table, isn't it? Are you getting what am I saying? If there is nothing, why should I show the table? Instead, I can show a simple message saying there are no properties at this point. Use that button and add a property, something sort of that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and add a message. Let's go for H3 message and say uh, there are no properties at the moment okay please use 
add property button to add one you know so this message should appear i think we should put that little bit down oh, sorry we should put that little bit down by saying empty dash or empty two for example empty five better and we should put that in a center aligned fashion you know so maybe i can say style i'm just going to do it right here it's like only one property i want to deal with say this is going to be center okay so this is the message that i want to put but the problem here is <laughs> it's showing both of them we have to show either one of them are you getting my point yes. have you heard about something what is the conditional rendering yes. oh, we did that last time can you think of a scenario can you think of a code that will generate this uh, or the it will show this only when there is no property what should i write here when you want to display this when properties dot length equal equals to zero then and and then you can render this now what will happen it will be rendered only when there are no properties and you can see that there are no properties i mean we are removed only from memory huh? we have removed it from the memory that's the reason why I see why you see this message but at the same time the table is also appearing it, the opposite of this condition will be applicable for table can you think of it can you can you tell the can you tell me i'll write it right now properties dot length greater than zero and and put that table and very close just close that bracket now what will happen magically table will be gone i've deleted all the properties that's the reason table is gone and that's the reason you see that message when i say refresh i'm going to bring all the values back it was only for temporary as i said you know all the properties are there and you see the message is gone now when the message will appear again yes you click on this delete all of them see this we are about to delete the last one are you ready yes. if i click on this boom table is gone message is appearing this is called as conditional rendering this is called as a conditional rendering. this is what am i looking for i hope you are getting it are you yes. okay now that we are done with the properties oh it's not like we are done we have to click on the details and we have to go for property detail right let's see how it has to be done uh, we have to go from this to this that means we have to go for uh, clicking on that button where are you huh. that's the table and that's the button so I'm gonna go back here and I can say on click we'll do the same thing because we need to know which property that we want to go from here to there you know so I'm gonna go back here and I can say on details and pass index for now we'll have to fix it in a different way when we go for calling the apis but at this point this is the best way i can think of hmm can you tell me like how do i go for it how do i go from here to the other other screen navigation how do i go for navigation we have to say const navigate is going to be equals to use navigate and then call that function i'm sorry navigate where I think it was property details. I don't remember what did I use last time. Let me go back to app.js and use the path that I've configured here. Property details it is. Okay, so going back here and say this is slash property details. Now that we are having it, look at that. If I click on property details, I mean uh, click on the details and it's kind of going to the property details here. Are you getting this? Okay, let's finish this one here. Believe me, property details is the simplest one because it's going to look exactly similar to add property, right? What we said last time, it's going to be looking exactly like add property. It will let you to modify this as well. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go back and literally reuse my add properties code. You know, literally copying it and da, 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 here it is, testing it here, you know. Change few things. This is not add property anymore. This is property details. So change that function, change that export, sorry, change that export and change the title as well. It's not the add property anymore, it's property details, screen like that. I hope you are getting it, okay? So now if I click on that, this is like a property details. Right now, this is empty, it's all right. Uh, save means it's gonna show you the property details at the same time you can update it. So it's kind of doing both of the jobs. It's not only showing you the details, it can also allowing you to update the details as well. Okay, sir, this is what you're looking for. No, this is how we can take it. 
Okay, I think we are kind of done with this as well. I mean, this is like a GUI we are thinking about. We have not co connected this application to uh, backend yet. That's the reason. Everything is just looking like a static UI. Okay, so now we are done with the property section altogether. Let's go for the user. User is the simplest part. There is no add user. There is no add user, right? <laughs> it's just like users. Stable. So what should I do? <laughs> Going back to chat GPT and saying, hey, chat GPT, what you are doing? Generate 10, I'm sorry, generate JSON file or JSON with 10 users uh, with fields. What do you want? Okay, first name, last name, email, pa password is not needed. How can you get the password? <laughs> How can you show the password? <laughs> are you an idiot? Okay, we have to show the address. I mean, not right at the time of registration, user will pass all the details, but we should have a profile, right? Update profile, something. Address, city, you know, state, uh, zip code, sorry, zip code. Um, what else? Phone number, right? What, oh, what else? What else? Give me. Ha, gender, fine, no worries. I think more than sufficient. I think that's all right, right? Any, you want to add anything here? Bus? Take it, chalo. Ha, that's what I'm looking for. Wonderful. Love it. <laughs> By the time it is doing it, going back to dummy.json and be prepared with this. Users.json. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. These are 10 profiles with their respective years. Thank you very much. Let's say thank you. <laughs> it doesn't stop. <laughs> it, wants, it wants me to communicate further, but I don't have that much of time. I don't use this button, OK? Don't tell me to use it. I feel really ashamed to use this, actually. But it's like saving the time, nothing more than that. OK. Okay, okay, where we are, where we are, where we are, user screen. So I'm going to go back to the user screen. Here it is. And kind of creating the table. It's going to be same as property details, right? There's nothing different. So going back here, loading the data, saying import users data from, sorry, where is it? Dummy slash users JSON, right? And don't forget, we said that, don't forget, it's users said users and start to i'm sorry user state user state and start with the user data that's how it is okay fine now that we are having the data here let's create the table quickly it's going to take more time for us to do it we already have done it table 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 dash stripped t head tr th that's the first one hash th and let's add few details like the name we'll just concat first name and last name then we'll show the email oh is the email there ah yeah. Uh, yeah finally yeah there is there's email there is a phone number there is an address there is a city there is a state there is a zip code oh it's already been there you're not paying attention i believe it's a phone number i already have taken <laughs> And these are actions. You want me to show it? Fine, no worries. It's not necessary to use all of them, but it's all right. If you have taken it, let's go for it. Okay, so T body. Seems like you are done with your capacity of sitting at one place, right? <laughs> Those who are going outside, please come back. <laughs> Just don't go away directly from there. Anyways, let's. I didn't say go away. Say come back. Anyways, so coming back here, uh, this is the T body. I'm going to go for users dot map. Same technique that we have used earlier. Every user will get converted into a TR. Okay, in that TR, uh, one, okay, let's try doing it. Sorry, it's TD I'm looking for. I think uh, I said that there's a user and an index, we need both of them. So this is going to be like index 
plus 1. Okay, this is the, sorry, this is the TD. And probably here we want to show some of the other user properties. Okay, here we are. So starting with the name, name is like the first name. And right inside this, user, last name. Okay, next one, email, phone number, gender. Email, phone number, and gender. Email, phone number, gender. Address, city, state, zip code. Address, city, state, zip code. And these are the actions. So this is not needed. This is not needed. OK, I think uh, what we decided, we want to change or we want to disable the user. That means we need a button to do it. Button, BTN, pay attention, BTN dash, but warning, that's all right, warning. And then we can say deactivate or activate. We'll change that status on the, you know, maybe on that uh, active status, the one that we are going to see later. Deact what am I saying? Deactivate like that. Okay. And what else did we decide? Uh, details of that user. Do we need to show that? We don't have to. Oh, there is one. I I'm going to skip it now. But this is the booking screen. That's all right. So I think deactivate. If you want, I can put right now. But uh, I think we are cover covering every single thing in the table. What to show in the details screen, right? That's the reason primary and me2 more than sufficient oh sorry i need to add two more two more things like button sm otherwise it will be big buttons won't look good so now we are here e doesn't look good it's going to be like success that looks better than this you know i don't agree on that warning so i'll change it here Okay, now we are having users and uh, we are having deactivated and all of that stuff. Probably it looks fantastic. I can click on details and nothing happens because we have covered everything here, you know. So nothing that we have to worry about. We are done with the properties, we are done with the users. Now that what we are looking for is the bookings. Now bookings we decided to go for. Uh, okay, generate. I'm kind of troubling you again. Generate JSON with 10. Okay, let's see if it can it can generate booking details with fields, username, or maybe I can say okay username, the date, or from date, to date. Uh, yeah, uh, rent it's called as, then, ha, huh, property itself, property name or property ID, property name or property title and property address. I think more than sufficient. Property address. Let's see if it can generate. My God, it has generated it. Isn't it looks like a magic? <laughs> Feels like a magic, isn't it? It's no magic. It's generative AI it's using behind us. It's all about machine learning, guys. It's all about machine learning. That's why I'm not wondering to, uh, you know, use that chat GPT for generating the data. Will you please do it? <laughs> yes, finally. Yeah, I got covered it. Okay, here I am. I'm gonna say bookings dot js Jason, here it is. Wonderful that we are done. Nine fifty what? Who cares? Going back to bookings, and we are done. This is the last screen that we are working on. Import bookings data from dot dot slash dummy slash bookings again const bookings sorry set bookings use state bookings data that's it we are almost done you must be getting what we are doing now it's going to be something like the table 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 dash script 
T head, T R, T H. Again, the index. Sorry. Oof. Index. Uh, you need the username, the one who is booking it. Then you need the property name, the one that user has booked. The property details. I'll put it here. Then I think user detail. Okay, username <laughs> is fine. Then we can go for uh, one more. That's like a date from date and a to date i think that's all right this is going to be like t body i hope you are paying attention i can see that <laughs> bookings dot map this is the booking and then we have a return a tr in that there is a td where we have to start with i'm so sorry we should have started with index oops oh sorry booking and index so this is going to be like index plus one uh, this is going to be like td here we want to show the username i think if i look at that not properties sorry i think we can look at this one there's a username we are having okay so maybe i can directly show that username here booking dot username Okay, now the next one is the property details and property details will have property title and address together. So property details and the property details comma the address. Should I? No, it doesn't, it doesn't look good. Hold on. Property title and address. Let's split that. So this is where we can say booking of property title, sorry, property title and the property address. Okay next we are having from date and to date oh we did not put the range here hmm this is the only way to get the money isn't it <laughs> uh, from date from date and this is to date and one more this is the range i think that is done so if i look at that wonderful we are having the username property name bookings title all of that stuff is done wonderful so if i go to home that's a default leave it for now properties we are having them we can add a property here we can see the property details from here we can delete a property here and if all of them get deleted probably it will show us a very nice message saying hey uh, there is no property left here you know you go to the users you can see the list of users now you can there is no need of having these buttons but you insisted access and i added it <laughs> okay and then you go for the bookings and you will see the current bookings the users have done so far you know and finally if i click on logout i'm going to go back to login again if i'm not having any account i can go back to the register register myself come back here <coughs> come back here <laughs> i'll click on login again and then i can again play with this for the rest of my life as promised we are done before the time <laughs> i told you it's like a piece of cake the question here is, how much have you understood? <laughs> and that's the reason 